So here we've got a Hyundai iLogue, which is a 2012 model, and this is a, a basic van, as you can see on the interior. Hyundai gives us trim down low. If we tap on this trim, you can hear between the sheet metal and the clips, there is a bit of tolerance, and it does rattle around when you drive. Also, the panels on the side and on the roof have no damping at all. So what we're going to do is put some of our Stage 1 sound dampening mats on these panels to take out the, I guess, acoustic resonance in it. And then we're going to line the inside of the van with a foam, which is going to stop that sound hitting a rigid surface to reduce all that reverberation coming through. So let's get started. So here we have our materials and of our basic van pack which allows us to insulate the walls and roof to make this commercial vehicle feel more like a passenger vehicle. So we're just going to remove this side panel here and as you can see it's held in by a couple of plastic fasteners. Now there's a couple of different types of these fasteners. This one here in my hand is a Christmas tree clip which is designed to be pressed in once but you can get these guys out. We've got a handy trim removal kit here which has different forks and pointy tipped ends that you can get in behind the clips. So I'll show you how we're going to get this one out. You can see it's got a Phillips head screwdriver in it, which you carefully, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on this, but if you just unwind it backwards, you'll see it'll start to come out. It might want to get stuck like mine is there, so it needs a little bit of force. We're just going to use a, a fork here, put this underneath and help assist in getting it out. So. That gets the middle out and then we can get in behind it, pull it out, clips out. So we'll just go ahead and remove all of these. So we've got all our clips off, now we'll pull this panel off, show you what's inside. So in there you can see we've still got exposed sheet metal. So all this talking and twisting that's going to happen through the van driving it is all going to add to noise coming through all these panels. So we'll get some dampening sheets in these open areas here. We'll give this a clean out. You're going to have to clean this dust off because you need a clean surface for these damping mats to stick to. So we'll get this cleaned up and we'll start applying the damping mats. What the material consists of is a rubber lower layer, which is self-adhesive. It doesn't actually have an adhesive glue on it. The actual base material itself is sticky. This means for, I guess, vertical applications and inverted application, the product will stick and you're not at risk of an adhesive layer breaking down over time and in the product failing. This is why a lot of the automotive manufacturers will use this and they will put it throughout the car and it does get used on roof skins. So another trick for the roof, if you're concerned that is this stuff going to hold up there, rather than put a big sheet right across here, where it's got to go over all those valleys and you've got risk of it trying to stick in there. Cut these panels down so you've got a panel that fits there, another strip that fits here. You could cut a little strip in here if you like, but these ones are going to take out the bulk of that noise. So what we're going to do now is put a bunch of panels here and then all we're going to do is tap on it and see if we need to put a strip in there or not. Around here, on that ridge, it's got so much strength that that steel's not going to move, you don't need to worry about it. So here's a little tip for you, when you're doing areas like this, which have got, I guess they're going to absorb some length, is we're going to stick this up on the, le the left end here, and rather than bridge it across then try and push it in and stretch the material, I'm going to roll it down and then push it in with my fingers, roll it up and then push it in again and then put that down. You can use your end of your roller here to push it in there and then even this if you you'll find uses for this domed end but now we're going to use the wheel and put enough pressure on here to get this stuck down so the adhesive bites in you'll find that the initial contact it'll touch and if you go to peel it you've got a chance of peeling it off but after 10 minutes it should bite in and stick hard so you just got to make sure you put some pressure trying to do it with your hands you're really only going to stick 60% of it on and then you're going to go, oh the product's no good, it doesn't stick. But out here I haven't even touched it yet. So once we put some pressure on it, out there on the ends, so they're stuck. 
and then you come and try and peel it, it's a different story. So we get asked a bit, should I do the front half of the van, will it, will it make much difference? After we did the rear half and you tap on the outside of the van and then you tap out here, it's really noisy. Now the driver of this van has complained that in the rain, a heavy rain, they can't talk on the phone, they can't hear anything. So we've tapped on the outside and up the front there's nothing in there and it's noisy. So there is enough in this pack to be able to put some dampening sheets in the front. You do need to drop the headliner which is pull these clips, pull the grab handle, You'll have to pull your sun visors, your A-pillar trims, drop it down. We're a bit limited in time with this car, so we've been a bit sneaky. We've pulled this down, and we've got a dampening sheet up there. We'll stick another dampening sheet in there, and it's gonna be effective. It's not the right way to do it. You will get a nicer job if you do go to the effort of pull it down, but limited in time, you can get up there. You will get them in. We'll tap on the roof after, and it'll be a solid finish. So we've removed the cover on our tailgate, and as you can see here, we'll tap on the outside. It's really drummy, so you are going to get noise that bellows up from the back of the car. You are limited to getting to these panels because it, it, there's little openings. So what we'll do is we'll just cut up some tiles and feed them in there and place them around and just keep tapping on it until we're satisfied that the sound's gone. So we've got our wheel arch here, which it's a little bit of a complex shape. So the easiest way to do it is I've cut a strip to the width here, basically to the tangent of that arc. I'm going to start in the middle because as you get, wrap this, it's going to want to Peel that way so it's easier to do it in sections so we stuck that first sheet down I'm going to use the back of the roller push it into all these grooves here the negative shapes you can use that section of the roller too to get that over so you get a nice result with it there and then the next bit we're just going to run down here and then we'll just keep cutting tiles until we work around all these different shapes so we'll keep going with this Now it doesn't matter, I can either leave the gap there or I can overlap it. You can see it's it's quite malleable. So even that creasing, the roller is gonna, the handle of the roller will get it stuck down. Our goal with the product is to get it stuck down. And then we'll just go over the top. Any air that you see you can just force out of it. So you can be pretty heavy handed with this roller here to get it stuck down. If you find there's an air bubble in it, what you can do is just get a knife and just pop it and press it out. And then we'll figure out where the next piece is gonna go. So you can see here, we've overlapped it and we haven't taken a huge amount of care in it as long as we've got coverage on there and we've managed to force the foil and you can see there, by using the application roller, the stuff's so malleable that you can push it in and fold and form it in, you still get a decent surface. So we're going to put a carpet over the top of this, but we'll run a foam over this to get rid of all the lumps and bumps and absorb it and then we're going to repulsive this with a just a universal stretch carpet. We've got our 6mm insulator foam which is a closed cell foam. Now this has got a, a textured looking face so we're going to leave this raw in the van. Um, now I've measured the width of the van and allowed a little bit more because in all these lumps and bumps it's going to come up short. So. What our plan is here, the roll is 6.5 metres by 1 metre, so we're going to do 1 metre here and finish it up down there. We're going to go straight over these little ribs, otherwise it's going to look a bit messy. And then there's a bolt out 
header beam here that does have enough room that we can put it back in. It's actually got some slot adjustments. So we'll cover right through that area and then put that beam back in there. So this is where you're going to want a friend to help you. Um, the, it is a bit of challenge to work upside down. What we're going to do is just relieve a small amount and tack that in and then just slowly peel out more plastic. What you will find is this foam, the adhesive on this foam is directly to the foam. It doesn't have a carrier film or anything. So as soon as you touch this, your finger's going to stick to it like this. And then you're going to go to peel your finger off and that time you can see a little bit of foam's peeled off with it. So if you need to touch the glue face, the easiest way is just lick your fingers so they've got a bit of moisture on it. You'll touch it, it'll work as a release agent to stop, I guess, the foam sticking to you. The other option is to grab it out of the edge where you're not touching the foam. So I'm going to start here. So, and I'm just going to wrestle this. Now I'm going to just cut a little bit, a little bit off that and we're just going to tack that down. Now I'm going to tuck it, there's a bit of a gap here, so I'm going to tuck this up into this corner. So that's tacked up there, and now we can simulate, okay that's all going to work well up in there, tuck it in a bit, I'll try and run it straight down there. So you want your application roll here. What I've actually done is I've pushed it right in and then gone over so we've shortened the foam. Rather than try and stretch it over and push it down, it's always going to want to shrink back. So I've sort of I've, I've rolled the sheet up, pushed it over and rolled it down. So we're actually losing length as we go down but we're not stretching it here. So now that's tacked up there, I'm going to start to go down. Down here. Now your challenge is to get it so it doesn't pull up short here. The good thing with this foam is you will be able to compress it. So if you need to twist it, you will be able to compress it. If you try and stretch it, it's probably the worst thing to do because it always want to shrink back. So we're better off trying to compress it at the moment because this isn't totally square the foam wants to pull that way. So what I'm going to do is compress this corner a bit by pushing it backwards and tacking it down. And the foam will absorb that, it'll stick, not a problem. It's because it's under compression, not extension. So what I might do is go to about here with my scissors. Peel off maybe 50 to 100 mil. And then we'll get up under and we'll peel the sheet out as we start sticking it down. I'm concerned that I'm not going to be able to get in and reach this corner to peel this plastic away. So what I'm going to do, I've peeled a little corner away, I've got some masking tape. I'm just going to run a tail and hang it out. And what it means is that once we've stuck that up, I can pull this tail and effectively peel this sheet out. So we'll set it up and just double our masking tape over so it's not going to stick to anything. Stick it onto this face. Just make sure that's stuck well. Another one over the top. So in theory, we can reach that and pull that out. So now I'm going to stick this up under this channel here, and then we've got two areas set up. Once we've got that done, we will be able to peel it back now and stick it all down, and we know it's visual. Covers up the edge, looks neat one of the trim removal kits that's got a nice soft edge just to push it in up and tuck this up so it's not visual so that tucks that up in there and then we know that's stuck down even in these sort of areas you can get in and give it a push this is fairly blunt this thing so we'll just make sure that's all stuck down so we're stuck down to about this point here, which is, is where I want to be. So I'm going to look for our tail up here, peel the plastic down, and then chase this area up here and get all that stuck down. 
So here's the tail we made. You can see it's taped on, it's stuck well. I've been able to pull it and relieve most of the plastic and just work the sheet in. So I'm gonna pull a bit more of it out now. Now we're gonna go back over the other side and I'll show you how we apply it. So as you can see, we're stuck down through here where we've peeled the plastic out. What I'm gonna do is slowly keep rolling out and then move across, move across. So it means the material's falling into all these shapes and effectively it's getting shorter this way. So we'll follow these channels. Important that the same thing with this way. We're chasing it here first and in all those areas. And then we're chasing it over the top so it's effectively shrinking there. This way you're not gonna have any shrink back, you're not stretching it. So I'm gonna push it in there first. And then that allows us to chase it down here. So you use both ends of this roller, especially where the, these negative shapes are. And you can see our plastic's sitting about there at the moment. Which makes it manageable. So it's probably running up here. So I'll start following this one up too. And you can see there it's pushing into that high. So our plastic's running, I can see the line there. So I'm gonna go back, peel a bit more of it, and then we'll keep chasing that up through. So it is important that you do, if you just try and roll this around on your hand, you're not gonna get enough pressure. You need to use a roller like this, put enough force on it and try and get every square centimetre of it so you get the glue to contact. It's important because the sun, the UV, it's exposed to heat. I mean, on a hot summer's day, a black roof, we've measured temperature in the low 70s. The glue on this is good for around 130 degrees, but you've gotta make sure you do compress the foam enough to get the glue to contact. So get it all stuck on, then give it a good roll over the top. If you do find, like I can see there's a couple of air bubbles there. If you get something sharp and just poke it through, you'll burst the air and allow it to come out. So here we've got our overhang. Now you can see it's pulled up probably perfect there. Down here it's getting longer. So all I'm gonna do is run some small cuts, which are gonna give me a guide that I can cut this. What would be handy if you had some chalk, you could draw a line. What's good is we're not stretching it out. So I'm happy that I can push that back on itself, tack that corner down, and then even press that guy in there. So the last, and in that corner, oh, I'll cut a bit, a bit off him because it's a radius. And we can tuck that guy in up there. He's fairly forgiving that we can get him up in there. And that'll give you a nice finish. Now, we've got a little bit of plastic here. And then just peel that out. Right. Now I'm going to stick the, the edge down first, let that balloon out, then push it all down. So as you can see, it comes up reasonably well that you could leave that as it is. 
The finish of this with the textured face too, it's, it's got a level of tear resistance, but you can leave it finished without putting trim on it, and it doesn't look out of place in a vehicle. So you've rolled around and you'll find, you might find you've got a couple of air bubbles like this one here, it doesn't want to go anywhere. So just get a sharp object, something like this, give it a couple of pinches, you can already see it's vacuumed back on, gone. There's another little one there, so I'm just going to give that a couple of spikes, hit that. So we've got a gap in the middle of this roof. We've used our sheet this way, which is one metre wide, and then this way, one metre wide. There's a header bar that comes up through here, so it's gonna cover this joint. So we've only got this joint to worry about. What we were considering doing is cutting a nice straight line here. However, we've put a straight edge up and it's pretty good. So all we're gonna do is cut a strip to the width of this, and we'll just press it up, butt it up here, and then here it doesn't matter because we're gonna put the header over it, so there's a slight gap. It's not visual in the car. So the two finished things, you'll see, will look continuous. So we'll do that now. So we've, since we've put the foam underneath our header beam, we've added a little bit of thickness. These are slotted, so there is some adjustment. But as you can see, if we try and push it up too hard, we're going to push the roof skin up. So all we're going to do is file these out a little bit, open this up, which is not going to affect anything. It's still in there. So we'll take that down, file them up, bring it back, and then that's not putting too much tension. But at least we've foamed all the way through, covered up the joint. So we've got our 6mm foam that we're going to line the inside of these, what are window blanks, with. So an easy way to create a template to make life easy is we've checked that this window shape here is the same on the inside. So we've just got some butcher's paper. You could use plastic if you've got plastic, anything you've got. And then all we're going to do is trace around here to create that shape. So I've got a pencil, take it back to high school. So we'll take this off now, we'll cut it on the bench and then offer it back up, make sure the shape's right. Then we can transfer this onto the foam, cut the foam out, take it on the inside, stick it on. And we'll put it up against this panel here, which is the opposite side of the car, but we've tested that it's symmetrical. So that fits in there. So now what we're going to do is transfer this to our foam. So here we've got our foam, which is cut to size. So we'll just lay this guy up, check. Looks pretty good. We'll peel off the plastic through here, pin that in, and then we'll chase it out through that side. So now we've got the panel covered, which means that even I can hear in here that we no longer have the rigid exposed sheet metal that sounds bouncing off. So we've basically muffled it all. By having the foam here, your sound waves, I guess, are getting absorbed before they come back at you too. So that we can leave as a finished trim panel. It doesn't look out of place. So here we've got our quarter trim, which if you do recall, we tapped on this panel and when you drove the vehicle, you're getting a lot of noise from it. And what it is, it's the tolerance between the plastic clip touching out on the metal. So what we've got here, and you'll notice in your pack, there's a thin, two sheets of a thin foam, which is a three mil foam, which is gonna crush down. We're gonna use it as a gasket. So all we're doing is cutting 50 mil strips, and we're gonna run it around. You can see where these holes are. We're gonna run around the whole border of this. We'll punch back through the holes, so that's not gonna matter. And when we put it on, it'll compress and put enough tension on the clip that that rattling is not gonna be there anymore. So, we'll so this is the, the basic van pack, which gives you your walls and your roof. 
and your wheel arch is insulated. We've also done inside the rear quarters. You can see in this door, a couple of sheets of the dampening panels. So the other option you have is, do you leave this finished in the Debna, just raw like this? Or what we've got over here is we've upholstered it, we've put the six mil foam on it, and then we've also put just a stretch carpet over the top of it so it looks finished. So what we're gonna do is we'll take this one to that next level to show you how it's done. So here we've got some of the six mil foam. Now I've cut a basic template to this. So we're gonna tack it on this vertical area and you'll find it'll, it'll compress and you'll get a pretty good coverage. We do wanna finish up short with this, probably around 20 millimeters. So we don't build thickness that when we put this door trim back on, it's not affecting the height that we can still get these clips in. So what I'll do is, Start, just peel off the back of this in the middle. So we can draw on this because none of it's going to be visual. So if I just mark a, a line here and here, so I've got two marks, I know I'm going to glue, tack that down to there, and I'm going to have enough material to get around each direction. We're going to put the carpet on. So we've got our six millimeter foam over here, which has leveled out all the lumps and bumps and layers that we've got. We've got our stretchy material. So I've cut this oversize at the moment. We're just going to lay it around here to get a feel for how we're going to cover it and where it's going to crease and where it's going to stretch. So I'm allowing more than we need, we can cut that back later. So, I've positioned it where I'm pretty happy. What we're going to do is just put my knee against it here to pin it. I'm going to fold it back and just using this 3M spray glue, we're going to spray both surfaces. Now, we're just going to let that dry. It's important that you let it dry. If you go straight on, it's gonna be wet, it's not gonna stick, and it's not gonna dry out. So once it's tacked off, give it a couple of minutes, and then we're gonna glue this on. Right, now it's ready to go, we're gonna tack it in position. So that's pinned it. Now we can continue with the rest of it. So I'm confident that I'm gonna glue this area, so we'll spray some glue on here. You can see that one's stuck. So same process. Now we'll let that flash off, put this in position. So I'm applying a little bit of pressure to stretch it over this area here and push it in. You don't need to worry too much about this because our, if you just massage it with your fingers, the material will gather and you get a nice finish. But this is going to be covered, so we can cut this anywhere here. So now we'll keep working around, we'll spray glue all this, work our way up there. Here's the finished result, the van's back together, the trim panels are back on, the arches are upholstered and you can see the finished result with the roof and the side panel. So I'll just tap on these trim panels because they're a great one which we showed you before we put the three millimetres around them. That they don't have that rattling, we've tuned that out in the tailgate too so you tap on that tailgate up there and that panel's not rattling. All of that rattling, talking, twisting, going through the body we're not going to experience. So... 